So, you want to start creating liner cut prints, but you don't quite know where to start with buying supplies. Or, perhaps you've already started liner cut printing, but you're finding it difficult with the materials that you already have. I'm going to tell you which three tools I think you should invest in to make liner cut printing more enjoyable and that I think you need to get clean, crisp liner cut prints. There are definitely liner cut materials that I don't think you need to pay particular attention to. For example, Battleship Grey Linoleum that you buy from the art store is the same everywhere. Um, and I also think that Barron's, what are used for burnishing the back of prints of your hand printing, are pretty much unnecessary. I would recommend using either the back of a wooden spoon, a lot of people do that, or if I'm burnishing, I choose to use a small, um, thick walled glass and I upturn it and I print like this. Um, but please, before we get started, I just want to clarify that this video is not sponsored and the tools that I recommend and show you are tools that I've purchased and that I use regularly. Okay, here are the three tools that I think really make a difference. First up, carving tools. Do not buy the interchangeable red handled tool. I am going to show you a picture of this criminal now for your reference. For a start, not being able to move from tool to tool as you're carving is a real downside to this, this model of tool. Um, it really speeds things up and makes things easier if you can just switch from tool to tool as you're working. Also, the tool bits themselves are made of pressed thin steel and there's not a lot of attention put into them. They're really cheaply made product. Um, they often come quite blunt and they often come warped. So you're really not likely to get a clean result working on a tool like this. For a budget option, what I would recommend instead is one of the boxes of Japanese tools. Um, I'll show you a picture here. I have a set here. Um, they are slightly rusty because I have wildly mistreated them. Uh, last Halloween, I used them to carve my Halloween pumpkin and so I didn't, I didn't clean them properly. They're basically, my set are retired now, um, but they are still a good set, uh, despite not being quite as fine as the tools that I use most regularly. They are a more quality product than, than that criminal, the interchangeable set. If you have a slightly bigger budget, I would recommend going for the flex cut or file um, palm tools. I haven't tried the flex cut tools personally, but I know a lot of lino cut artists who do amazing work do use them. Um, these are the tools that I have. If I were to start again, I would build up the tools individually and buy them one by one. Uh, the most important ones and the ones that I use most regularly are the micro V tool and the micro U tool, along with a wider U tool. This is actually an EC Lions tool, and I think I wouldn't recommend, like, they're okay, but I wouldn't recommend these um, compared with the file tools. They're a fairly similar price point, and the tools themselves are not as nicely made. Um, but I would buy a wide U similar to this in the different brand. This set of tools will enable you to carve fine straight lines, fine curved lines and to clear large areas of lino. I believe that you can create any shape you want with that set of tools and a little bit of practice. Okay, number two on the tools that I think you should invest in is a roller. Now I don't think that you need to go crazy with the rollers, they do go up in price really significantly you can spend hundreds of dollars on a really quality roller what i would recommend is a soft rubber roller this enables you to roll a really fine layer of ink and you want to keep rolling until you get the bum peeling of a pot plastic seat sound i purchased a couple that are of a harder rubber and these ones are no good they just they slide in the ink as you roll them so what I would recommend is this one is a speedball one, it's a pretty budget option um, and it works just fine. The third and final thing I think you need to invest in is an either or. I think either you need some kind of press 
or you need to invest in paper that's going to work with hand burnishing. If you want to print in a range of papers, and if you want to print on thick paper, you're going to need a press. I use this one, which is a hand lever press. There are quite a few of these on the market and they come in at around three to five hundred dollars. So it's not the cheapest item, but I think it is the investment that's made the biggest difference to my lino printing. If you want to hand burnish, you need thin paper like this. It's not office paper, it's not the paper that you would find in a printer. It's, it's seriously thin, it's about 80 GSM. And the majority of these papers are Japanese papers. These papers have fibers that absorb the ink really nicely and they have a translucent quality to them so you can see the light coming through them. You'll find these papers at specialist printmaking stores or specialist paper stores. They might have a very small selection of paper that's suitable at your local art store um, but I would recommend maybe just having a look online if you don't have access to these other specialist kind of stores where you live. So that's it. The three tools that I think will make the biggest difference to your lino printing experience. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're making cool things and following your art dreams and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.